Did you know that up to 70% of international joint ventures fail? So this alarming statistic motivated me and my co-authors, Randall Mork and Bernard Young, to find out why. We studied the strategies of approximately 100 international joint ventures in Brazil and found that failure is six times more likely to happen when there are corporate governance and ownership structure differences between partners. So the key to a successful global strategy then is aligning the long-term governance incentives between partners. But what does this mean to align governance incentives? To understand the pitfalls of international joint venturing, you must first understand the key differences of corporate governance and ownership structure around the world. In the United States and also the UK, the most common form of corporate governance and ownership structure of large corporations is the widely held standalone firm, such as Procter & Gamble or Citigroup. They typically have a dispersed set of owners, known as the principals, that entrusts professional managers, such as top management teams, known as the agents, to grow the value of the firm. So the corporate governance incentives from this point of view are about aligning the interests of the principals and the agents on maximizing the wealth of the firm. In most other parts of the world, pyramidal group firms are the more common ownership structure form. Pyramidal group structures look like a nexus of affiliated firms that are related by both legal and social ties. There are three main differences between the widely held standalone firms found in the US and the pyramidal group firms. First, unlike the standalone firm, which has several shareholders, pyramidal group firms' ownership is far more concentrated. Typically, the main shareholder is usually a family, which is most commonly found throughout Latin America. Second, compared to the standalone firm, in the pyramidal structure, the manager and the owner are often one and the same. The third difference is the pyramidal corporate governance structure has the unique ability to generate and protect wealth through leveraging their control with both direct and indirect ownership ties. And this is where the power of the pyramid lies. So let me illustrate an example. A rich family in Brazil that owns a company can split $1 billion of the family money into two and let each be the equity participation of a public company worth $1 billion. Assuming that 50% of equity shares is enough for control, the family now controls two public corporations worth a total of $2 billion in corporate assets. Repeating the act once again, the family leverages the $1 billion of family wealth to control four $1 billion corporations while maintaining only 25% of equity participation in each. Repeating the act multiple times, the family can create many more layers of firms to leverage the $1 billion to control a surmounting amount of corporate assets while maintaining only small percentages of equity participation in the lowest tiers of the firm. Our research revealed three strategic blind spots that occurred when the joint venture partner was unfamiliar with the differences in corporate governance incentives. International joint venture failure resulted from these three common mistakes. Number one, firms that partnered with pyramidal group firms had disproportionately lower levels of equity stakes to control rights. Second, firms simply did not understand the control chains within the pyramidal structure and how the direct and indirect ownership of the partner would ultimately affect the joint venture's profits. And lastly, misaligned corporate governance incentives where one partner is looking to maximize the wealth of the joint venture and the other partner is maximizing the wealth of the main shareholder in the pyramidal group. So our research showed that international joint ventures that thrived used strategies of reciprocity where they partnered at the same level. Lasting joint ventures also shared boards and top management team representation and had cross holdings in each other's companies at the highest organizational level. So the bottom line is when corporate governance and ownership structures differ between partners, 
risk mitigating strategies can increase the likelihood of international joint venture success.